Welcome. I'm glad you joined in today. Today I want to start off with a personal story. When I was a kid, I used to have vivid dreams of flying, probably like most kids do. These dreams were not like flying in an airplane, but flying like a bird or Superman, soaring through the air. If I had one superpower that I could have, flying would have to be it, because that would be pretty cool to have. But here's the closest I ever got to flying as a kid. One summer, I was going to church camp at Shelby County Christian Assembly in Shelby County, Missouri. I was the only kid in my age group going from our church. Our preacher, Rodney Randall, was going to take me to camp. He was a pilot. He had an airplane that he needed to have it moved from the airport to an individual's farm uh, where he was going to keep his plane. And he was going to move the plane when he was taking me to camp, which meant I was going to get to fly. And I had never done that before. Uh, this is going to be a, a great event that takes place for me. So we went to the airport right outside of Kirksville, Missouri. We went to the plane, got in it. He started it up. He taxied the plane and, and <clears throat> we were on the runway and we went up. It was exciting. The higher we got, the better it was. I was taking it all in. Uh, just the, the higher we went, the more I could see the, the farms and seeing the crops and watching the cars traveling on the road, uh, flying over the town of La Plata, Missouri. And it was just neat to see that, that town that I'd been in several times before and places that I knew, but from a view that I'd never seen it. It was great. This experience was the closest I ever got to actually flying as a kid. But even flying in an airplane, I was doing something beyond myself, beyond my control, that took me places I could never have gotten on my own. And that's a good picture of today's text, Isaiah chapter 40. We're spending a few weeks looking at timeless truths found in the Bible. These are tested, tried, and true scriptures uh, that are some of the most loved, quoted, and shared verses in the Bible. We find ourselves today in one of those timeless uh, scriptures as well. And I want to start with Isaiah 40 and verse 31. It says, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like evils, eagles. If you feel today like you've been beat up, exhausted, uh, you need to hear this. God is able. If today you're ready to throw in the towel, ready to give up, you need to hear Isaiah chapter 40. God is able. Nothing is too hard for him, and he wants to work in your life. Just pause here for a moment. And think about it, that we should never forget who God is. God is eternal, without any beginning or without end. He is all-powerful. He is everywhere present. He is all-knowing. He is always alert. He never sleeps. He is ever-compassionate. His heart for you is huge. God can do what he says he can do. His hand is not too small. He is not simply a bigger version of ourselves. He is something totally other. He is God and he is able. We need to hear that today. You need to hear that today. He can strengthen those who wait for him in faith. He is able. And I believe until we come to a true understanding of God's character, we'll never be amazed by him. We'll never worship him as we ought. We'll never run to him for refuge or realize the great love that he actually is showing us. Knowing who God really is puts life in proper perspective, for this is who God is. And listen to verse 29. He, talking about God, gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. He has power and strength. He offers it to those who are weak powerless. That means us. If today you feel weak and powerless, turn to God 
who has what you need and is willing to give it. Now, the next two verses are just beautiful, uh, just so timeless. Verses 30 and 31. Even youth will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like evil eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Fatigue comes to all of us. Exhaustion is universal. It's not limited to a certain age group like those that are over 50. Uh, it is a universal human condition. But what's not universal is where we look in our weakness and our tiredness and our exhaustion. Where do you go when you're spent? God invites us to go to him because he wants to renew your strength. As it says, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Another way of translating this phrase would be those who wait for the Lord, those who hope in the Lord, those who look to the Lord. Now, I've found the, the biggest lessons about God and his greatness, those what we sometimes call aha moments, have not come when I'm on or so often when we're on the mountaintops of life but it's so often when we're in the valleys of life. It is in our weakness and brokenness, our heartache and hurt, that God seems to reveal himself in such a powerful way. The Apostle Paul found this within his life, and he talks about it as he writes to the church in Corinth. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, uh, after asking God to remove what he calls a thorn in the flesh three times, he gets an answer from God and God says, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. And that's what so many people have found that we find that true strength of God, not so much in the mountaintops, but it's so often in the valley. And so in our text, Isaiah is saying that our strength is made new as we trust in, as we lean on, as we hope in God. Here's another interesting thought that comes out of the Hebrew language. The word make new or renew literally means to exchange. So it may not be that, that God replenishes our strength, but rather he re exchanges or replaces it with his own. So it's kind of like these two cups. Now, it's like any illustration, don't try to take it too far, because we just want to get it as a, a visual idea. If this cup here is my strength, sometimes my strength disappears, okay? Sometimes I get exhausted, I get tired. But let's look at this cup as God's strength. And so a lot of times we look at that passage as, I am weak and I'm exhausted and I need my strength renewed. So it's like God takes from himself and pours his strength into us and fills me up. Now, that's not too bad a way of looking at it, but what it says there is he exchanges. So it's not so much that I need replenished and God just adds his, his strength to make me strong again. It's kind of like if we switch hands. If now... We take God's and God gives himself to us and that God takes our weakness. He gives us his power. He replaces his strength with ours. And that's part of what that passage is saying. He doesn't just make our strength come back, but he replaces our weakness with his strength, uh, his strength for our weakness. So some people believe also, as they look at this passage of Isaiah, you come to the last verse in ch chapter 40, they say Isaiah just messed up the whole poetic structure of what he was saying because he talks about soaring, then running, and then walking. In a poetic form, you would go the opposite way. That it would start off that, well, I'm weak and so I'm walking, so God gives strength so I can run and then eventually I soar. But Isaiah does it just the opposite. He says, soar, uh, run, and then walk. 
because I think he's talking about three different events within our lives. Sometimes God's strength in our lives, in our lives, allows us to soar. And that's maybe what some of you are doing today. And that's beautiful. But there's other times God's strength will allow us to run and not grow weary. And that's maybe where some of you are now. You're not soaring. And basically, you're not walking, but you're running because of God's strength. And there are those of you, even with God's strength, who are doing well to walk without fainting. For some of you, this season is presenting you with perhaps the most difficult experience in life, that you're feeling overwhelmed. You wake up in the morning and wonder if you can make it through the day, if you can just make it to lunch. You don't expect to soar with the eagles. You don't expect to run. You're just hoping to be able to walk. And when it comes time for bed, you thank God that you haven't fainted. Now, I know this. I know all three of those within my life. There's times that God's strength has allowed me to soar, and I'm thankful for that. Other times to, to run, but other times just to be able to, to make it. Because there's times in our lives that we're not wanting God to make us soar with what's happening. It's just, God, help me to walk. Help me to, to, to not faint. Help me to get through this, because it's not a time to soar. And I believe that's good news for us, that God always keeps his promises. Those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on high with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And you can bet on that. What a wonderful, timeless true for today. So today, as we end, I want to end with a couple verses that the Apostle Paul gives to us as he writes the church uh, in Ephesus. We find it in Ephesians 3, verses 20 and 21. And, and just kind of tie this in together with Isaiah 40. He writes, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Remember until we meet again, don't give up hope or give in to fear. Live by faith. Be a good neighbor. Be the church. When I can help you, let me know and shine.